What is happening, everybody? We are back for another episode of Daily Fantasy Knockout. As always, I am your host, Drew, at Houdini16 on Twitter. Joined all with... Can't even talk tonight. It's late. As always, I'm joined by the man, the myth, the legend, the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, the brains and muscle behind the show, Josh, at Stonewall MMA. Josh, what's going on? <laughs> I don't even know what to say, man. That intro is something else. Uh, thank you, uh, as always, for uh, you know pumping me up way, way more than I deserve. But um, thanks for bringing your knowledge week after week, Josh. Oh yeah, that's what I'm here for. Uh, you know, I'm, the, I'm the brains and the and the muscle, apparently, and you're the uh, you're the. You're I bring the, the personality and swag to the show. <laughs> right. Yeah, I almost forgot. How could I think my cheese mo? <laughs> as Razor Ramon used to say. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Um, You're all right down south, man. You could get in hit with this uh, hurricane or what? Uh, they cancel school tomorrow, so I yeah. Um, I mean, nothing's going on right now, so hopefully, you know, hopefully my house isn't underwater in 24 hours time. That would be that would be nice. But yeah, I think the worst of it's supposed to miss us. Uh, we're supposed to get some rain and some wind, and hopefully nothing too serious. Hopefully, no trees fall in my car, or my house. Um, I think it'll be all right. I think we're going to be okay. So Good, pumped up for a day off tomorrow, especially like to get ready for this, um, this 10 30 AM UFC Moscow card. Uh, I can spend Friday writing up my premium breakdown, uh, rather than doing that, like finishing it like Saturday morning, like I usually do. So that'll be good. That'll Starts be good. at seven 30. Huh? Starts at seven 30. I think that's Pacific time. I'm pretty sure it's 10 30. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll double. That's good. I, I should double check that. Y'all should double check that. Make sure you get your lineups in on time. I think it's ten. Oh, I'm pumping you up as the man. Power and the brains behind the show. <laughs> All right, I'll check. You, you do your thing. Oh shit! Yeah, you're right. God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Even better. I get to sleep in a little bit. Were you gonna Were you gonna wake up for the the first fight on the card? Oh hell yeah! Curtain jerker. Hell yeah! Um, so you want to just touch on real quick last week? Um, UFC 228, pretty. But you you were you weren't really involved. You're doing the whole Pitt Penn State game. Um, jealous. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I went to the you know, I'm, I went to the University of Pittsburgh, so I went back to watch them get their asses absolutely stomped by Penn State. Didn't really get out of hand until like the like fourth quarter. That's that's when I turned it off. I think they were the better team in the first half, but when you go one for four in the red zone, you fumble two punts. You deserve to lose. You're trash. Your butt, as Josh likes to say. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's your phrase, but all right. You said it before the we went on the air, but uh, yeah. So I didn't play much DFS. I didn't play anything. I didn't play UFC at all. Um, I was tailgating all day. I nope. thought about it. I got a you know some liquid encouragement at like. Three o'clock, and I'm like, yeah, that's time to ship a GPP. Let's do it. And then I thought better. I was like, nah, you know what? I should probably put my phone away. And uh, yeah, so I stayed away last weekend, but I heard the main event was uh, interesting. Yeah, man, you missed out. I mean, I think just a, for a GPP card overall, I think it was solid. I'm kicking myself that I didn't go in more. I mean, um, I was pretty, I mean, I was very heavy on, I mean, just like everyone else probably, I was he very heavy on Suarez and, uh, Andraj and they showed out huge. Um, kicking myself, I didn't play more Sanchez. I, I did play a little bit of Sanchez. Stayed away from Craig White, who I, is just a trash heap, even though he was fighting like the ghost of Diego. Um, so, sell five for that one. Uh, picked Jim Miller over Alex White. So, pretty solid, pretty solid week for me, even though like I ended up not stacking in cash, which is pretty unusual for me. Like, there just weren't, that, even with. Uh, Woodley finishing. I still ended up doing okay. Won stars and scrubs and cash, which is always a worry, but Miller winning in the first round pretty much sealed the deal for me. So that was that was hype. So only regret is I didn't go didn't play more because I think I had a pretty solid look lock on that on that card last week. So hopefully we can get continue the uh the run this week uh in Moscow. Let's say we uh get to it. Yeah buddy let's dive in. All right. Um, first fight on the docket, we got 
Bantamweights, Marab Dvalshvili is taking on Tyrion Ware. And we have uh, a bunch of giant favorites on this card, and Dvalshvili is the first of them. Uh, he opened at minus 350, but is now out all the way to minus 550. Um, his finish prop, though, is only plus 250. Uh, he's 9,200 on DraftKings. Ware um, is plus 425 after opening at plus 250. His finish prop is plus 700, and he's 7,000 on DraftKings. Um, so are we big on Valshvili, or is he one of the uh, 9K guys that we're looking to fade here? No, man, I'm I'm pretty high on Valshvili. Um, Bantamweight. So his last fight out, we actually saw uh, he fought Ricky Simone at Atlantic City. Um, really good power in his hands. He dropped, he dropped uh, Ricky Simone. Seems like the type of fighter who you know smells blood in the water, doesn't really want to give up, um, which is something that I love to see. Um, he throws a lot of spinning back kicks, spinning elbows. His output isn't the greatest, um, but the quality of his shots kind of outweighs that. Um, he seems to come out of the gate strong. Um, you know, he's just. He's a great fighter. I mean, he he has the takedown ability. He has he has high takedown upside. Um, he took down Simone six times. He took down Frankie Signs eleven times. Now you know. Although, what did he do with those takedowns? He ended up losing both of those fights. But that's fine with me. I mean, I I I'm okay with like a rinse and repeat to get all those those multiple takedowns. If he could just finish the fight, that would be great. And I think this is where he could do that. Um, has a great gas tank. I can't believe he lost that fight against Ricky, Ricky Simone. Do you remember that? Uh, I do remember that. Um, he was, he was like bicycle kicking his legs. He was getting choked for like a minute. Oh man. It was, it was brutal to watch. Like, is this, and the bells want, you were a Kate, you were a ringside. He was like, you're looking at him. You're like, is this dude like dead? Like what is happening right now? Is he unconscious and just like twitching? But he just but like, he was, like still, he just kept bicycling. I don't know. It was so yeah, weird. Yeah, and very controversial finish. The finish. bell, the bell rung, and then they called him. Uh, uh, they said he passed out, but I disagree. Um, I think he has something to prove in this fight, and um, I really like him in this spot. Tyrion Ware. Um, he is, I think, thirty-three years old. Decent cardio. Um, boxing seems to be his background. Um, He's longer, lankier, decent head movement. I think he stands kind of flat-footed, like on that front foot, kind of a boxing stance. Um, stands up tall, which opens himself up to takedowns. Um, definitely is not as as athletic as Tyrion Ware. Um, and I'm just not sure that he can handle the constant pressure um, and the takedown threats. This could be another rinse and repeat here. I mean, he does... Have a um, purple belt in jujitsu, um, so you know he might be able to find find his way back to the feet. But I'm not overthinking this one. Give me Devolish Vili in this fight. Um, I think he racks up a bunch of takedowns, and I think he could end up finishing this fight in the what do you say, first or second? I'm gonna say second round. All right. Um, I mean, his finish props plus two fifty. It's not the greatest, but I definitely think there's some finish upside here. Okay. The thing with Tyrion Ware is that he's, I mean, he's very tough. I mean, I, I feel so bad for him. His three UFC fights, he had to fight like three top prospects: Cody Stamen, Tom Dukumois, and Sean O'Malley. Like that is a, that is a murderer's row of bantamweights to just like, yeah, you're super tough, and you're gonna give them a good fight, and here you go. Here's like a dude on his way to the top 15. And um, I don't know if Duvall's really is quite there, but where, you know, where's takedown defense is not his strong suit. And that's all Duvall's really does. So um, yeah, I'm with you. I mean, Duvall's really is one of those 9k guys. I'm definitely going to be comfortable playing a, a bunch of um, tough. And he's just going to go for takedowns the whole time. So if he gets the finish all the better, because I'm going to be on behind on him. All right, let's go to the next one here. We have Ramazan Ami versus Stefan Sekulic. How do you say that? Your guess is as good as mine. I'm going to say Sekulic. Sekulic? Cool. All right, Ami, another 9,300. Opened at minus 475, is now minus 550. Finish prop plus 208. Sekulic, 6,900. Opened at plus 325. Has fallen to plus 425. Finish prop of plus 579. 
Um, all right, so before I get into this fight, just real quick. I don't know much about these guys. i got to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, well, Amiv has had two fights in the UFC. Um, anyway, just real quick, before I get into this fight, uh, I forgot to mention off the top. Um, I'll just save it for the end, but I just wanted to just mention it. Uh, we'll have an announcement at the end of this breakdown, so make sure you uh, stick around for that, or if you're not listening to this whole thing, uh, skip ahead to the end after we finish recording, and uh, make sure that you uh, – Give a listen to that, and thank you guys again for listening. As always, we really, really appreciate it. Make sure you give the video a like and subscribe to Brett's channel. It's a huge announcement. <laughs> yeah. Everybody needs to wait for it. Yes. <laughs> Do not turn off the video. You will regret it. Yeah. You don't want to miss this one. <laughs> oh, you're killing me, dude. All right. Woo! <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for not overselling it, but... um. All right, back in this fight. Um, so Sekulich is – so a bunch of these fights, it's like a Russian dude or someone from a Russian republic is – like looks like he's being set up to, you know, get a get a big win in the UFC's first card in Russia. And um, so I don't know if this is necessarily one of those fights because Sekulich doesn't look bad. Um, Sekulich is Polish, if I'm not mis mistaken. Um, he's a Luta Livre black belt. He looks like pretty solid, but like Amiv, he's pretty low output. So Amiv has had two fights in the UFC. He fought Sam Alvey when Alvey missed missed weight for middleweight. You know, Alvey fights like really, really often. And um, let me see here. Da, da, da. Where's he from? Okay, no, I'm sorry. Sekulic is actually out of Serbia, not Poland. Anyway. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Anyway. Um, so, so Amiv just like, you know, a, as you do when you fight Sam Alvey, he out-volumed him, he pressured him back to the fence, uh, but kept his defense tight, um, you know, went for takedowns, didn't didn't secure very many, but I think he got, you know, one or two and out-volumed Alvey, um, who just, you know, as we know with Alvey by now, if he doesn't like land a knockout or like a, a big shot in a round, then he's going to get out-volumed because he's just so counter-oriented. So Amiv, I think... I don't know if it's because he was like spending a bunch of time um, like trying to take Alvi down and spent a good amount of time like grappling Alberto Mina in his last fight, which we, which he always which he also won by decision. Um, but he he strikes at a pretty low output, only about two and a half strikes per round. And so does Sekulic. Sekulic is also like very low output. Uh, they're both pretty solid grapplers. Um, Sekulic has looked very hard to take down. Um, but I mean, granted, the thing with Sekulic is that he's been fighting in like on the Serbian scene. Like um, almost all of his fights are in Serbian battle championships. So, what kind of level are you fighting? Are you fighting there? Like clearly, this dude's a pretty talented fighter. Very hard to take down. He's got very strong counter wrestling. Um, you know, typically, if he ends up, you know, reversing position or going for his own takedown, he secures it. Um, but he likes lots of like you know one off strikes for the most part. Um, he's not throwing, he's not throwing much. Um, he's a southpaw. Um, so he's throwing like, you know, a cross, like a left cross counter hooks, occasional like head kicks and, and spinning kicks, but he's throwing one strike at a time. And again, just like not doing a whole lot. So I'm, I'm going to favor Amiv here, but this is not a fight that I really want to play much of. Um, cause both guys are really are pretty low output. I think Amiv is going to struggle to get takedowns if he really pursues them. I also think Amiv is the guy who's a, international master of sport and combat sambo so he should have like you know the higher pedigree of of wrestling and grappling credentials but i think both guys are going to be hard to take down so we get a pretty low output fight here i'm, I'm going to say Amiv takes it um on slightly more volume and the fact that he's going to be pushing um sakulich back to the cage a little bit more maybe like you know in on his own takedowns a little bit more frequently um wins a key scramble or two, but I think this fight's going to be close. Um, so I do not have a lot of interest in Amiv at 9,300. I mean, for that price, you need a bunch of takedowns and or a finish. And his finish prop is plus 208. It's not terrible, but for 9,300, it's not awesome. And um, again, like, you know, maybe Sakulich is just going to be out of his depth here. Like the jump up in competition is going to be too much for him. Um, and so maybe Amiv gets some takedowns here, but... Amiv has not already has shown that he's not super high output in 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 the wrestling or in the striking, so it's hard to trust him there. Um, if I had to play one of these guys, maybe it would be Sekulich because 
uh, as like a cash punt or something. Um, again, Amiv's finish prop isn't super intimidating. If Sakulich can secure some of his own takedowns, but he's not, again, he's not going to be doing a whole lot himself. So his floor is pretty low. You know, like he could score, I don't know, 10 or 15 points in a loss. Like that's not, that's not really going to get it done for you, even at 6,900. So um, he's someone I'm keeping an eye on, I guess, but I'm probably going to try to look elsewhere overall and not really play this fight much at all. All right. There's a 9,300 uh, fighter that, we could probably fade. Let's All jump right. to the next one here, big guy. Yeah. All right, so Jordan Johnson is taking on Adam Yandiev. Adam Yandiev. Um, Johnson is the favorite. He opened at minus 175, but has now gone all the way out to minus 260 with a finish prop of minus 145. So pretty strong there. He's 8,700 on DraftKings. Johnson is dropping down to middleweight. Um for this fight after I think going two and out at light heavyweight in UFC so far. Yandiev is um, the underdog here, 7,500 on DraftKings. He opened at plus 135, but has now risen all the way to plus 220. And his finish prop is plus 440. So are you high on Johnson here? 8,700, not too expensive. Um, what do you think? Yeah, man, I am, I am pretty high on Johnson um, based on two things. Um, he is a wrestler you know he's a division he has a division one uh he's a division one wrestler at iowa um in his three fights he's had four takedowns two takedowns two takedowns um and i like to target wrestlers so his output is fairly low it's about 3.11 significant strikes per minute uh averages about 44 percent accuracy um what he wants to do is he wants to get in close make the fight dirty utilize that wrestling um get the fight to the ground um, he, I definitely think he's one of the guys on this card that you can target for takedown upside. Um, and the second point of why I really like him is he's fighting a newcomer. Um, Adam Yandiev is new to the UFC. I have not, I've only seen some regional footage on the guy. He's built like a brick shit house. This guy is jacked up. Wouldn't be surprised if he's on something. Um, he's the type of guy he looks to come forward. He's going to throw bombs. I'm um, hoping to land something, you know, on some of the uh, footage that I de did see, it was encouraging to see some takedowns and a few submissions on his record. Most of the time you just see these big hot prospects who knock out everybody. They just come forward and they throw bombs and throw strikes. This at the other. Um, I saw a little, you know, more to his game than just that. Um, but even so, not something that I'm going to, you know, really buy into. Um, I'm going to play the wait and see approach. Um, he is semi intriguing because he's shown flashes of other things, but the guy's got uber power. Um, and if he catches Johnson, I'm, you know, he could be put to sleep. So it is a possibility, but I'm going to side with uh, the veteran Johnson here. Uh, I think he's going to utilize that wrestling. He's going to wear down Yondiev. Um, I think Yondiev will blow his load early in the fight. And then, um, gas out because as joe rogan always says you know it's hard if you carry in all that muscle it's hard for the blood to get get all get to all your muscles this out the other um so yeah i think johnson wins this fight uh, via decision johnson has yet to finish in the ufc um i'm hoping that changes this fight um if it does i think he wears down adam yondiev over a round or two and then finishes him off um you know late second round Maybe early in the third. So give me Jordan Johnson here. Um, sorry, the dog is here. Um, give me Jordan Johnson here. 8700 bucks. Great finish prop. I think he's going to be very, very popular based on the line movement. So, But he, I think he's in a decent spot. Okay. Fair enough. Um, Team freeze pop, by the way. Yes, obviously. Um the one thing I'll say about uh, Yandiev, I'm not sure if you mentioned it, but he's coming off a three-year like layoff or something like that, or a really long layoff anyway. Is that do I have that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing about this dude, Kareem Zidane, uh, you know, top-notch journalist at Bloody Elbow, wrote a, wrote a, uh, a feature on Yandiev, like talking oh, yeah? about his like super crazy past. So I just read that today. 
it's very strange. Um, so you should check it out. The dude's like in his 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 last fight before this layoff, like uh, was kind of had like some accusations of match fixing going on with it. Um, I don't know. Anyway, just kind of weird weird dude. Uh, his nickname is the Beard. Beard, he's got, yeah, he's got a giant beard. Go figure. He's got a very nice. He does have a very nice beard. I'll give it to him. But um, yeah, probably a spot for Johnson here. Let's get it. All right, let's jump into the next one here. We have Magomad and Kalev. Ankalev? Ankalev. Ankalev, sorry. Magomed Ankalev and Marcin Prashino. Ankalev is 9,100. A lot of 9,000s, man. Ankalev, 9,100 bucks. Open at minus 350, is now minus 440. Another great finish prop of minus 150. Um, Procneo, is that how you say it? Procneo, yeah, I think. Okay, Procneo, 7,100 bucks. Open at plus two fifty is now plus three fifty with a finished prop of plus four thirty eight. All right, I'll save you. Ugh. Someone is tired. Um, so both these guys really disappointed in their debuts. Um, if I don't know if you remember this, but Uncle Iev was a was a pretty heavy favorite over Paul Craig at his um, debut, and disappointed like even even before the fight ended, he was disappointing. He like this guy is. Um, let me double check my notes here. I'm pretty sure he's another like master of sport in Sambo or something. Um, no, I'm sorry. Sorry, excuse me. No, no, he is master of sport in combat Sambo and actually also a Greco-Roman champion of Ga of Dagestan. So, you know, he's got all these like crazy wrestling credentials, won a bunch of fights um, by like knockouts in the first round. And, but against Craig, like he actually, he was the one who got taken down twice. He didn't score any takedowns. Um, but he did like spend a bunch of time on top, I guess, after reversing takedowns and like beating Craig up from top position. And then he got triangled with literally one second left in the fight. He tapped like after a fight that he was winning, probably like 30 26 or something. Um, so super disappointing. Um, he's also supported like, you know, by Ramzan Kadyrov, the Chechen warlord who's like super shady. And yeah, that's messed up, man. Yeah. Um, I watched like I watched one of his fights in preparation for this, and like he knocked some dude out, and the ref like let it go on way too long, and let this let this Brazilian guy eat like a ton of punches. And of course, they're fighting in like Grozny, Chechnya. I'm pretty sure at an Akmat event, and so the dude like pounds the guy's head into the floor, and then it cuts to Kadyrov with like his little like retinue of henchmen all standing there like clapping and gritting and nodding, and it's like this is gross. This is you just brought this dude in to get like flatlined by, you know, your boy, and then of course like his boy comes to the UFC, kind of like uh, Magomed Bib Babulatov who got Babulatov, um, yeah, who got flattened by John Moraga. Um, this dude ends up you know disappointing when he's not getting like really preferential matchmaking and he's like fighting in Chechnya with like all of these like warlords and stuff around his opponent like to intimidate or whatever. Um, anyway, so. Don't have super high, uh, you know, feelings for Uncle Iev. He's also fighting. He's fighting Marcin Prokhniyev, who I I like more, even though he got knocked out in his debut against Sam Alvey. Uh, I like him because that's what I picked. Like again, again, Prokhniyev was I think a pretty big favorite over Alvey, who had just missed weight in his last fight against Meev and like looked crappy. Um, but Prokhniyev is like a karate guy who gets like really wild and doesn't have a lot of defense and just like wins bombs. And I thought that would be perfect for Alvi's like counter striking st style. And that's exactly what happened. Prokhnia walked face first into a couple of right hooks, uh, got dropped twice by Alvi in, in the first round and got finished. So which one of these guys is going to disappoint worse? Um, again, like, so I'm gonna favor I'm gonna favor Uncle Live here. He does have like again, he should have this this wrestling background to kind of fall back on. He's a little bit tighter defensively on the feet. Um, at least he's not so willing to just like exchange bombs in the pocket. Prokneo does hit like a truck, um, but he's just so open defensively. Uh, his take on defense has been fine so far. Like again, but he's that's on like the regional scene, so hard to take a ton away from that. Um, so if Uncle I have really pursues the takedowns, he should be able to get them, but he wasn't taking Paul Craig down a bunch, uh, had to kind of rely on, on reversing him. But Craig is a pretty solid grappler, and the fact that he was able to reverse him pretty easily 
I guess speaks well to his grappling ability. So I, I'm going to go with Ankalaev, but this is not a dude that I want to go all in on, especially for 9,100. Um, he does have a solid finish prop. Um, so minus 150, he's worth some shots and GBPs for sure, but not a guy I'm going to look for in cash. Um, you know, I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm hesitant to call a fighter a quitter, you know, like this dude's a professional cage fighter. Um, so he's clearly way tougher than I am, but tapping out to a triangle, like in the last 10 seconds when you're up 30, 26, like you got to go unconscious before you tap, you know, like that's just crazy to me. Um, so a little bit concerned about that, like, you know, maybe not fight as, you know, comfortable surroundings in Akhmat. Um, Maybe he just doesn't have like the same same heart or whatever. So I guess this matchup will tell us a little bit more about kind of where his head's at. But he did dominate Craig before, you know, getting choked out. So um, anyway, Uncle Iev here. GBP play on both sides. Favor Uncle Iev, but not again. Not a neither one of these guys is super reliable. Um, so you're just kind of banking on it being Procneo kind of being sloppy. Uncle Iev maybe wrestling, you know, for the finish upside here. So. Yeah, that's kind of my take. All right, man. I like it. All right, man. I, like it. I think. I think. Um, I got some feedback um, here. I got some feedback here. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um. Yeah, I think. Uh. You know, there's a lot of nine thousand, nine thousand dollar fighters on this card. It's you know, determine which one you like best. I mean, you got you got to cut some of the fat in terms of the nine thousand dollar fighters. So I think that's a, that's a good breakdown. I appreciate that. Um, all right, let's get into the next one here. All right, Merbek Tysumov. I wish this dude could get a freaking visa because, I mean, what, you know, I know James Vick, like, deserved a shot at, like, the top 10. You know, he was, like, 9-1 before he fought Gaethje. Like, clearly deserved a shot at the top 10. So does Tysumov. This guy just, like, can't get a fight in America or outside of, like, Eastern Europe, and he is a killer. So excited to see him back in action here, uh, even though this fight might not be the most appealing. Anyway, he's 8,900 on DraftKings. Uh, he opened at minus 350 over Des Green. He's now minus 500 with a finish prop of minus 125. So another strong finish prop there. Des Green um, is 7,300 on DraftKings. He opened at plus 250, has now risen all the way to plus 400, and his finish prop is plus 750. So are you on the Tysomov train here, or does Des Green kind of stymie him? Um, I do like Tysomov here. Um... I mean, you kind of said it yourself. This guy deserves big fight. Um, he's coming off five straight knockout wins in the UFC. Uh, clearly, he's a good striker. Um, he's had two KOs that have come via counter strikes. Felipe Silva was knocked out coming in, and I believe it was Demar Hadzovic. Demir Hadzovic, sorry. He was rocked by a counter and then finished shortly thereafter. Excuse me. Um, his only loss comes against Michael Prezeris. Uh, who took him down three times and had three three passes with him. Um, and Elaine Patrick showed some success, um, kind of putting him up against the cage, uh, but that didn't that didn't last too long. He couldn't really keep him there. Um, so he's a good striker, throws a bunch of head kicks. He has really fast hands, keeps his head up, good footwork. Um, he's an Eastern European BJJ champion. He's a very active top game. Um, and he's strong wrestling and good reactive takedowns. I mean, this guy pretty much has it all. Um, Desmond Green, 2-2 two and two in the UFC, coming off a decision over Gleason Tebow. Um, likes to stand and trade at range. Um, sometimes, you know, he darts in and out, throws leather. Definitely has some pop in his strike. Um, in his strikes, I'm sorry. Um, fast set of hands. He's pretty accurate. He's quick. Um and he has fast feet to avoid shots. You know, he does a good job of no selling um, his opponent's shot. And he has a good chance. He has a good, does a good job of circling, countering, um, and kind of creating space between him and his fighter, him and his opponent. Uh, he was a D1 wrestler at Buffalo. He has really good takedown defense. Um, and he will hit that reactive shot if things are getting a little too hot on the feet for him. So, that being said, also, I'm going to play a little narrative street here. Desmond Green's, you know, had a pretty rough couple of weeks here. Um, he was in a car accident where I believe two individuals died. 
Is that right? Uh, I know that there was a horrific car accident and at least one person died. And I think it was two. I think it was an elderly couple, maybe. I don't know. I don't like reading stuff about reading stuff like that. But he, um, yeah, there were two fighters or two two individuals that died, and he went through that. Um, that's got to be tough on anybody. Now he's got to go overseas and get into a fight. I don't know. It just doesn't doesn't smell right to me. Um, I'm gonna go with Tyson off here. Um, I think he has. He's gonna have good success with that counter if. If Desmond Green decides to shoot in, shoot out. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's kind of where I'm at here. Give me Tyson off. I'm going to take Tyson off via decision here um, because I don't think Desmond Green has even finished in the UFC. I don't think he has. I don't think so. No. I, yeah, this is another fighter. What's he priced at? Tyson off is eighty nine hundred bucks. Good finish prop, but um, I'll probably be underweight to Tyson off. Okay. How about does so does Green have what, what do you think about Green as like a cash punt? Do you think he has like any? Yeah, kind of I mean, I wouldn't hate it because he's probably going to get three rounds. I think. I mean, I don't know. I just don't know when's Tyson Muffs like the, the the knockout from his his last fight. Yeah, it was a good strike, but like I don't want to call it a lucky knockout or a fluky knockout, but. You know, he, th- he threw a right counter and it landed and the guy went to sleep. Um, I think Desmond Green is going to be a little harder to hit. He's going to be play that distance game a little more. Um, and he's going to shoot in and out, but I don't know. I just, I just, I like Tyson off to win, but just something, something smells funny here. I don't think Tyson off finishes him off. And if I'm wrong, I'll totally eat it. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a, I agree with you. I agree with you everywhere. Green is a hard dude to hit cleanly. Um, he doesn't throw uh, like he's good at like styming other guys' offense. He doesn't do a whole lot himself, but he's pretty strong, like pretty good everywhere, and not easy to like just dominate anywhere. So, um, so I'm with you. I think Tyson Mob by decision is probably the pick, and probably this fight is another one that we can um, be underweight on. I'm interested to see the lineup builds this week, man. I think. Uh... Mid range feels pretty good right now. There's some, there's some in there that I that I like. I'm definitely looking forward to the co-main, um, but there's maybe a couple other ones in there that I'm not super high on. Anyway, we'll get we'll get to them. All right, next one: Rustam Hobbylov versus Cajun Johnson. Hobbylov ninety five hundred dollars opened at minus four seventy five is now minus seven fifty. Finished prop of plus one seventy three. Cajun Johnson sixty seven hundred dollars opened at plus three twenty five is now plus five twenty five. Finish prop of nine forty six. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this fight again. Hobby Love ninety five hundred. That's a lot. Um, and I'm, this is another guy in the nine k range that I'm probably going to be not super high on. Uh, I'm one, I mean, I'm really curious to see how the ownerships kind of shake out here. Like, if everyone's going to be on a lot of the same people or um, or what. But Hobby Love is not a super high output guy at all. Um, he does average four takedowns per per fight, but um, you know doesn't always reach that number. I mean, he's got some fights where he's had like six takedowns, and other fights where he's only had like two. Um, so, and he only lands about two significant strikes per minute. We know the deal. What uh, with Cajun Johnson is at this point, he wants to circle on the outside and kind of pot shot a little bit. And if he can mix it up in the grappling exchanges with someone who's not like going to overpower him, then he will do that. Like he took down Stevie Ray a couple times, uh, was able to get the better of the grappling exchanges there and pull off an upset. Uh, I'm rooting for the guy. Like you know, he's one of those guys who is like standing up to the UFC. It's kind of weird that a, a fighter like Johnson is doing that since he's like you know super low on the UFC totem pole. Like wasn't he was coming off that. Uh, tough nations cast and like didn't even do that well on the show and had a couple of like low level fights that he was able to win and then he starts coming out with um, you know like unionization talk and it's I mean it's great that someone's doing that because they need to like get on that already but um, now the UFC is just lining him up with tough fight after tough fight and good on him for being able to win a couple of them he just got worked in his last fight by um, shoot who was it who just just demolished him. Um, Islam Makachev just ran right through him. Um, but 
before before Makachev like really pursued the takedown, it was again like you know you know four minutes or so of Johnson circling, circling, you know, throwing leg kicks, throwing side kicks. Um, the thing I don't love about it, like he, he does a couple of things that I like. Like one is he changes direction when he's circling. He's not just circling one direction and getting really predictable. You know, he kind of like when Stephen Thompson was fighting Darren Till and Till was pressuring him a lot. He did a really good job of you know staying um, unpredictable and not easy to corral because he could change directions. He could change. He could switch stances, which is what uh, Johnson does a lot. He switches stances a lot. One thing I don't like when he switches stances is that he gets really square. Sometimes, like sometimes his feet will get like just straight parallel to one another while he's facing his opponent, and so like he, you know, when you're in that position with your back to the cage, and so when he was fighting Adriano Martins, Martins just like wouldn't pull the trigger and, and didn't capitalize on those mistakes. Uh, Makachev shot in like you know when he could when he got himself close enough um, to Johnson, he just shot in on him, took him down, and then you know, moved him out and arm barred him inside a minute. Um, so I can see Hobwob doing that here, but he's not super, like, this guy's a decision machine. He hasn't won uh, by stoppage since his first two fights in the UFC, which were, like, six years ago, um, five or six years ago. Um, it's been all decisions since then. Two of his three losses are by split decision. Um, so this is a fight, like, you know, if, if he doesn't pursue the takedown, uh, hard enough, I wouldn't be shocked to see Johnson like steal it on volume. I, I tend to think that Habibov is still going to win because he's going to hit harder. Um, he's going to have Johnson on his heels the whole fight. He'll probably score a couple of takedowns, but I see it being a pretty low output affair. And so again, not a fight I'm really interested in. Um, so I guess it might be kind of nice to just know that you're just off these fights and you don't have to like spread your ownership around too much on them. And then you know, if Habibov ends up just suplexing him on his head and knocking him out or, or, you know, choking him out in the first round, well, I guess I'll just have to eat it. But nothing in, his, in the recent history of these guys or the numbers suggests that that's super likely. Um, we'll just finish prop again. Habibov plus 173, not a bad finish prop, but for 9,500, again, like you're going to need a finish or a butt loader takedowns. And neither one of those seems like the most likely outcome. So pass for me on this one i think all right all right interested in this next one because uh we got the most expensive fighter and a much like by far the best finish prop on the card so we got peter Jan, uh 9600 on DraftKings. he opened it he opened at minus 530 over Jin Su sun he's now out all the way to minus 900 with a finish prop of minus 215 uh, Sun, Sue Sun, is 6,600 on DraftKings, the cheapest fighter on the card. He opened at plus 350, is up all the way to plus 600, and his finish prop is plus 1192. So, Jan, I know, is a hot prospect. I don't know much about Sun, so fill me in here. Is he going to get smashed on? Dude, um, yeah, I think that's the play here. I think Jan smashes. He's making his second walk to the octagon here. Um, he finished... Your boy, Teruto Ishihara, in their first fight. Um, How are all these guys my boys? Eric Spicely is my boy. Yeah, all the trash fighters are your boys. <laughs> Teruto Ishihara. Yeah. All right. Whoever fits my narrative. Um, right, perfect. Yeah, yeah. So Peter Yan comes forward, throws a ton of power, really good striker. Um, yeah, man. He, this, I love this guy. And I got to be honest with you, Josh, I haven't seen much of Jin Susan. Um, all I know is he's nine and two in his career, um, making his UFC debut, and I didn't see much film on him. Uh, I've heard it while, while you're yawning there. I've heard he's a Korean brawler. Oh, good. That's 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 what I've heard about him is that he's just down to bang, and uh, you know he fits the Korean fighter stereotype of just someone who's going to bite down and just wing wing shots. I know he has four wins by TKO, and two of them are by submission. Um, and he also has two decision losses. So I'm kind of, I was looking through Brett's breakdown here, and I'm not going to give it away on the air, but because um, he even says it right here. Um, his film is very, very difficult to find. Maybe I didn't look good enough. 
So give me yawn here. I mean, the line speaks for itself. Yeah, I mean, that minus 215 finish prop. No one else on the card is really close to that. You are going to have to pay all the way up. So Yeah, that's the question here. We, we got to figure out the dogs to the dogs to play here because, I mean, there's some cheap guys who we think can go the distance, but so far none of these – None of these dogs are looking like super competitive. Maybe maybe Sekulic, um, maybe Prokhnia was able to pull off a win against Ankalaev. I don't know. Not a lot of not a lot of great stuff here. Johnson maybe can eke out another another split decision win over Habalov. Because you want you want Jan in there, and I want I want Dvalish Billy. So how are we gonna get how are we gonna get these guys in our lineups? That's what I that's what I want to know. Right, right, right. All right, so next up we got C.B. Dalloway and Khalid Murtazaliev. Bless you. Khalid Murtazaliev, 8400 bucks. Open at minus 160 is still minus 160. With a finished prop of minus 116, wow. C.B. Dalloway, 7800 Open at plus 140 is now plus 140. And finished prop of plus 479. Murtazaliev, whatever, 8400 bucks with he's favored and his finished prop is minus 116. Is that not a plug and play? Um, well... There are like, the question here is um, I don't, it's it's weird. I mean, yeah, the minus one sixteen finish prop when you're only a minus one sixteen favorite is pretty crazy. Um, I'm guessing people are thinking that Dalloway is just washed. He has been hurt in a lot of his recent fights. He was coming off a quote unquote win over Hector Lombard that he won via disqualification when Lombard knocked him out after the bell to end the first round. Um, so. You know, even in his last fight, he got knocked out. Um, he got hurt by Ed Herman in the fight before that, which he also won using his wrestling. Um, he got knocked out by Nate Marquart in his last fight before that, which was like a year and a half earlier because he suffered a back injury in some weird like elevator accident um, that scrapped his UFC 203 fight. Um, so he's 35. He's been in the UFC for a decade. Um, 35 is not super old for middleweight, but... This fight is back at middleweight for uh, Dalloway. I think he did have a fight or two at at light heavyweight. Um, but I guess he's just got a lot of miles on the, a lot of, yeah, a lot of miles on the tires or a lot of miles on him. Whatever, whatever the phrase is. Um, never been the most durable guy in the first place. He's been he's been hurt a lot. I think I think his heyday was probably like in 2014, 2013 when he. Um, you know, rattled off a bunch of solid solid wins, uh, but has since suffered some bad n- knockouts and has been hurt a bunch. But the thing with Murtazaliev is that he's his he's Dalloway's third opponent. Change for this card. Um, Dalloway's first two opponents got hurt, uh, and so Murtazaliev is taking this fight on pretty short notice. Um, he looks pretty solid. This newcomer. Um, let me check my notes on him real quick. His wrestling has looked pretty solid um, on the Russian regional scene, which is, you know, as far as as regional scenes go, that's pretty um, pretty strong. So, so that's good in his favor that he can like you know score takedowns. Um, but he's taking on obviously like a D one All American wrestler, so I doubt that he's going to have the advantage there. Um, he might be able to stuff a lot of what Dollar wants to do. Dalloway can use his wrestling and use his wrestling well against um, Ed Herman. He couldn't really get it going against um, Hector Lombard, who is really short and also like a judo Olympian, so super hard to take down. He also didn't really shoot on Marquardt, I guess, trying to go for uh, the knockout on a guy who had just been beaten to a pulp by Kelvin Gastelum. Um, so I'm I'm thinking that Dalloway is probably more likely to go for you know his takedown game here, try to protect his chin a little bit. Um, Murtazaliev, he throws he throws hard, um, hard punches and kicks, but he doesn't throw like a ton of of uh, combinations. Um, he's got a pretty strong like switch kick with his lead leg. He'll throw leg, body, and head kicks with both legs. Um, Dalloway also likes to throw. Uh, body and head kicks, especially when his opponent is standing in the opposite stance to him. Um, Murtazaliev is also orthodox, so that won't be open to Dalloway. And um, since Murtazaliev is really good at, at switch kicks, like he's going to be hitting 
Dalloway on his like open side. Um, Murta Zaliev like likes to wing giant overhands that are pretty easy to avoid, but um, when he's pressed in fights that he's been pressed, he kind of shortens up on his punches a little bit, which makes him a little bit more effective. Um, I think he's lost his only two losses are to the same guy in I want to say fight nights, fight nights global maybe, and he was pressured a lot more in those fights and just kind of like ended up getting outlasted. Um, I think he got hurt and knocked out in like the fourth round or something like that by this by this dude. What's his name? Alakanov. Um, yeah, just he ended up like ducking himself into an uppercut and just got flattened. But um, he tries to hit reactive shots on onrushing opponents with his wrestling. Um, that's usually how he gets takedowns. He's not takedowns on his own necessarily. Um, but he looks like a solid fighter. I'm just kind of worried about the short notice you know, nature of the fight and maybe that Dalloway is going to be able to use his wrestling, kind of get that going against um, a guy who looks like he's got solid wrestling, but maybe not the most, maybe not quite as high level. Um, so this is a fight I want to target because I think either way, like you've got, you've got some strong upside in these guys. Either Dalloway is able to like get his takedown game going and um, score well with that, or Murtazaliev is able to hurt him on the feet. You know, minus one sixteen finish prop for only eighty four hundred is pretty strong. Um, should land some decent volume. Let me see what Dalloway's striking stats look like. I don't think they're super high. Yeah, two point seven nine. So he's would probably win a volume striking match. Um, so def- not not a fight that I'm like all in on. I could I could see it end up you know being kind of slow paced, kind of a grind if if Dalloway is just like kind of sticking Murtazaliev on the fence, going for takedowns, can't quite get them. Neither dude throws it at a really high output. So if Murtazaliev doesn't you know hurt Dalloway and Dalloway isn't able to consistently take him down, we could be in for kind of a grind. But um, there's enough upside here to target, I think, in tournaments. And so I'll have some shares of these guys, um, but not an all-in play, I would say. Ready to move on to the uh, main card there, bud? Yeah, sorry. I blanked out. I was looking at something. Uh, yeah, let's get on. Let's hurry up and get this done. I'm falling asleep. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. All right, so we got Alexei Kunchenko is taking on Tiago Alves. Kunchenko is making his UFC debut, but is a giant favorite. He's 9,000 on DraftKings. He opened at minus 245 over the veteran, but is now out all the way to minus 525 with a finish prop of minus 147. Alves is 7,200 on DraftKings. He opened at plus 175 has risen all the way to plus 415, and his finish prop is plus 599. So is Kunchenko the real deal? Like, why is everyone so high on him here? Um, I mean, he's 18-0 and in his MMA career, but he's 34 years old. He, he got started in 2013, I believe. Um, Russian fighter. Um, I believe he was an M1 global champion. He's fought... You know, a lot of fights in a quick amount of time. Um, he's shown a strong propensity, propensity to strike, turn fights into brawls. Um, he's very accurate. He's very powerful. Um, he's a very good striker. Um, the fact that he's coming into this fight at minus 525 with a finish prop that high against the UFC veteran Thiago Alves tells me he's either the truth or... Maybe Alves isn't getting his credit or people are smashing this bet. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I mean, he opened a minus 245. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. You look at Alves and he's kind of the gatekeeper at this point in his career. He's been in the game forever. He's fought the best of the best. Uh, he has that Muay Thai background. Uh, he's made a name off of using kicks, knees, um, and turning fights into kickboxing affairs. The question here is, does he hold up against the younger, more powerful Kuchenko? Um, I, will, oh my, oh, I have such a hard time picking Kuchenko here. Um, he should come out and smash Tiago Alves, but I'm going to go on a limb, and uh, I'm going to pick Tiago Alves to steal a decision in this fight. Oh, snap. 
There's Hot take alert, baby. There it is. Um, that is a hot take. Minus 525 favorite you are. <laughs> yeah, I, but, uh, I mean, we got to spice up the show a little bit. we got all these big-ass favorites. So you're picking Alves based on what? Like, wh why do you like him? Because he's a veteran. He's been in the spot before um, in the UFC. And that's basically it. I'm not going off of much. At the end of the day, Kuchenkov's probably going to come in there, outstrike Alves, and put him to sleep. But I'm going to side with the veteran here. Going with my gut. When I first saw this matchup, I was like, well, that, yeah, well, oh. Then the prices came out, and I was like, you know what? I immediately thought Alves from the start, so I'm sticking with it. There's no <laughs> um, – Valuable research behind that. I'm just, I'm going with the veteran. All right. Well, we do need some dogs here. Yeah. Play some of these favorites. So um, <laughs> maybe maybe Alves can come through for you here. But um, yeah, I guess take that pick with a grain of salt if you're not doing, if you're not super confident in it. But um, but I like I like the. Uh, I just don't know enough about Kuchenko yet, and I just. I like the ballsiness of it. Yeah. Thanks, man. Kuchenko off nine grand. I don't know, man. I just. I always psych myself out. I see these guys that are making their debuts, and I don't know. Anyway, let's get on to the next one here. Um, Andre Orlovsky versus Shamil Abdurakimov. Orlovsky, 7,900, open at minus 215, is now plus 105. Finished prop of 347. Abdurakimov, 8,300 bucks, open at plus 165, is now minus 125, with a finished prop of plus 245. Is that right? Uh, I think so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so does Arlovsky keep it going? Excuse me, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm going to say that he does here. I'm, I'm a little bit like I'm kind of surprised at both the opening line and the current line. Um, I mean, two fifteen minus two fifteen for Arlovsky, I think is a little bit wide in this matchup. But um, him flipping to be the underdog here is also kind of surprising to me. Abdurakhimov is a pretty sharp counterboxer, but he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have the, he doesn't have a ton of power, even though he just like slept Chase Sherman in his last fight. Chase Sherman is super hittable uh, and just is just like ripe to be taken advantage of by a sharp counterboxer like Abdurakhimov. Um, but Abdurakhimov isn't like a pressure fighter. He's pretty low volume um, overall. Uh, not a bad grappler, but. I think that Arlovsky probably has the wrestling edge here that if he really wanted to pursue takedowns, he could probably get them. Um, so, so I like Arlovsky here. I think this is a fight that he wins in a pretty slow, you know, medium paced kickboxing battle. Uh, I'm just going to kind of side with him in, in the, in the kickboxing. Cause I think he is a little bit more, a little bit more diverse. Uh, he'll throw, I know Abdurahimov throws some spinning back kicks, but Arlovsky, um, We'll open up with his kicks a little bit more. I think he's looked pretty solid since going to American Top Team, even though he did just lose to Ty to Ivasa. Um, he looks rejuvenated again after this camp change. Like, you know, he was fighting this giant hitter in Tui Vasa, and he was able to stand up to the to the power and acquitted himself pretty well. He just kind of got overwhelmed by Tui Vasa's surprising gas tank and just relentless power and aggression. And Abdurahimov is not going to be bringing anything like that to him. Um so on volume and maybe some wrestling mixed in, I'm going to favor Arlovsky. Uh, but again, like medium paced kickboxing battle, it is heavyweight, but these guys don't have very good finish props. Plus 245 and plus 347. Um, you know, nothing super intimidating there. So, you know, you got Arlovsky at, at under 8K. We do need dogs again. So maybe he's a play there. But other than that, I'm not really looking much at this fight. Pretty low scoring affair, I think, for the most part. Good stuff. That's the uh, the Stillman special, the low scoring heavyweight fight breakdown. Um, co main event of the evening Jan Blakovich versus Nikita Krylov. All right, this one is going to bang, and I can't wait. Thank God Nikita Krylov is back in the UFC. This dude is the truth. Um, so he is the favorite in his return. He's 8,200 on DraftKings. He opened at minus 110, but is out now to minus 135. With a finished prop of plus one thirteen, it's pretty strong there. He's taken on Blahovich, who's eight thousand on DraftKings. He opened at minus one thirty, but has flipped to a plus one fifteen underdog. 
Um, and he his finish prop is plus 285. So you want Krylov here, or are you on Blahovich to just, to uh, spoil his return? I am on Blahovich. Oh, snap. Okay. Tell me why. I agree. Josh? No, no, no. I don't disagree. I'm just like, I just like Krylov. I like the fact that he's never been to decision in his career. Um, he's just fun to watch. So I'm just curious. Well, why do you like Lohovich? Um I like Lohovich. He's coming off three wins. Devin Clark, Jared Karananier, and Jimmy Manawa. Um, I thought he looked – the Manawa fight was pretty good. Um, it was fun to watch. He's a calculated striker. Um, doesn't throw at the highest pace, 3.79. Kind of plods around there, but he waits for his opportunity to strike. Um, he does a good job of using his jab to kind of disrupt his opponents and disrupt their flow. Um, he's shown power in his hands in the past. Uh, he dropped Jimmy Manoa, I think, twice in their fight. Um, but he has yet to finish a fight in the UFC. Um, I just – I like what I see from this guy on the feet. Um in our notes here, it says he likes to outfight. He's a decision machine. And that's true. Um, I really, <laughs> I just, I just like him on the feet. Um, he's only going to shoot for 1.5 takedowns for the fight. Um, he has racked up on two separate occasions. I believe it was four takedowns and three takedowns. Um, I don't know if he's going to have that success against Krylov. Um, looking at, at his grappling background, he is a BJJ black belt. He just recently got that. Um, if he's taken to his back, he throws up the occasional submissions. Um, and sometimes he spends a little too much time on his back. Um, you know, kind of gets too comfortable doing that. Krylov uh, making his comeback here. Every single fight he's been, been in has um, been a, a finish. Um, kill or be killed. And he's got this awkward stance, kick heavy. Um, heavy strike arsenal. He's going to come forward. Um, very, very high output. He averages, I think, six strikes per minute or something like that. Um, always on the go. He's always pushing forward. So, like you said, yes, I think this one's going to be a barn burner. Um, but I just, I'm going to side with Blahovich here to um, be the more calculated striker and, you know, cut off those angles and let Krylov come to him and counter strike. Um, and hopefully finish the fight, but um, I'm going to say a decision. Jan Blahovic be a decision. Okay, I like it. Yeah, I'm going to be heavy on this fight for sure. Um, Krav is just a recipe for action. He's going to force action out of Blahovic, who can be passive sometimes. So great fight. I like the um, the dog call again. Um, I think Krav is going to be popular, probably more popular. I would. Yes. So again, Lovich, solid play there. I'm gonna have exposure to both guys for sure. All right, let's get into the main event. We have Mark Hunt versus Alexei Olenek. Mark Hunt, eighty six hundred bucks, opened at minus two fifteen, is now down to minus one fifty five with a finish prop of minus one fifty nine. Alexei Olenek, seventy six hundred, opened at plus one sixty five, is now plus one thirty five with a finish prop of plus two fourteen. So um, I like Hunt here. I think that I'm pretty comfortable. I mean, like, you know, I say this. <laughs> Again, it's heavyweight, and Alexei Olenek is just like the weird, you know, he's the boa constrictor. He's got like over 40 sub submissions, let alone, you know, forget about fights or wins. He's got over 40 submissions in professional MMA and like 12 Z kill chokes at this point. So I just like, but this just feels like a fight that Hunt should win. Hunt is generally pretty good about like, avoiding the clinch or takedown attempts from people who he knows like want to get him down. Like if you're Steven Miocic, okay, you're going to get hunt down. There's just, you know, a gap in um, overall athleticism at that point, And Miocic's wrestling is just too strong. Plus he's got the, uh, the striking to kind of back up and set up his wrestling. He can force shots out of, uh, out of hunt and then, you know, duck under for easy single legs. Oh, Linux is not gonna be able to do any of that stuff. He's going to, you know, he wades forward throwing overhand rights and left hooks. Um, he's pretty powerful, and, like, you know, his offensive technique isn't terrible. But he's fighting Mark Hunt, who is, you know, one of the, the premier heavyweight strikers uh, of all time. 
Um, dude is like just let me look at my notes here. Just kind of this. So his his timing, his accuracy, his feints, his shot selection, his parries, his patience are all just like you know top of the heap. He's not a dude who's going to get baited into into a brawl. His chin is, you know, even though he's been knocked out a few times, he still has an iron chin. He was taking some some pretty big shots from Derek Lewis in a fight that he was otherwise um, that he otherwise controlled from start to finish. And, you know, gradually beat the dude up and gradually got him out of there. Um, Olenek is going to be, you know, waiting forward, throwing bombs, trying to grab the clinch, trying to grab a hold of of Hunt to either, like, lock on an Ezekiel choke uh, or, or take him down. And Hunt, you know, has surprisingly, like, explosive hips. Like, he's, you know, good at exploding out of these positions, getting himself back to space. And so, you know... Again, heavyweight fight. Mark Hunt's uh, Achilles heel has tr- traditionally been uh, submission defense, and that's a Linux like strong suit. So I definitely could see why you would be a little bit worried here. But I'm just not. I'm not super concerned with a Linux like weird submission game. Um, I just think that Hunt is too smart and is just you know has is good at is good at stopping that that first. Um, that first attempt, that first like line of, um, you know, takedown or, or clinch entries, uh, you know, you've got to be a pretty savvy wrestler, I think, to get him down. Which Olenek, I don't think, is quite at that level. So I see Hunt boxing him up and getting him out of there around the midpoint of the fight. Um, so that's my take. Uh, I, I like, love it. yeah, I like Hunt. I'm going to have a hefty amount of exposure to him, I think, um, but. I'll probably have a few shares of Olenek just because it's heavyweight, just because these guys are over 40. Um, Olenek is a finisher and does have a skill set that could give Hunt problems if he's able to put him on the mat for any length of time. It's going to be very dangerous for Hunt. Um, I just see Hunt being able to, you know, bump his way out of the clinch quickly and just bop the shit out of Olenek. The old walk-off. Yes, I see another. I see another walk off in the future here. Love it. All right, guys. So well, that wraps up our breakdown for UFC Moscow. Um, that big announcement you guys have been waiting for. Josh, lay it on him. <laughs> wow, dude, <laughs> your nose selling the crap out of me over here. Um, all right. So, no, this is actually to... cool. I'm actually excited to do this. We are we are relaunching our uh, our Patreon. Um, and let me let us let us tell you why we are doing this. Um, so we do have the big the big um, Nurmagomedov McGregor card coming up, which is I guess the impetus for us, you know, kind of having this conversation, opening this opening this uh, door back up. It's been a while since we've had it. I think we've got a little bit more of a following, a little bit more. Um, I don't want to say following, but a little bit like you know, greater audience. Um, a lot of like a lot of definitely loyal listeners who you know interact with us uh, on Twitter get at us a, a good bit so we, we want to thank all of you all of you guys um, so what we're doing here the main reason I'm, I'm doing this is because I think I can um, offer some value to those people who have been purchasing my premium breakdown pretty consistently um, so the premium breakdowns that I've been you know uh, selling basically at MMA today dot com are five dollars each but we're gonna have a um, a pledge tier at ten dollars a month that'll get you all the premium breakdowns that I write. So, you know, if there's a month where there's only two cards, well, then you're paying, I guess, face value for the breakdowns. But if you know most months there's three or four or sometimes five cards, you're getting a pretty significant discount on those. So I hope that that will be um, something to entice you. Um, as I mentioned on Twitter last week, there have been a handful of people six, seven, eight people who've been getting the, the breakdowns pretty consistently and others who've been in there like one-offs. So I'm hoping to, um, again, like offer value to those people who've been getting them pretty consistently, hope to entice some other people in there. Um, so in addition to like, you know, we break down the fights here, but, you know, with the benefit of a little bit more time and our breakdown in the rear view, I can kind of break down the fights a little bit more fully, uh, do a little bit more research, you know, we have the, the benefit of the weigh-ins at that point, typically, where I'm when I'm writing them. I'm also doing um, 
dabbling in straight betting picks. So those are included. Um, and uh, I've been offering the past few weeks a sample tournament lineup that I kind of break down a synopsis of like what kind of what my thinking is behind building this lineup. Uh, the one that I did last week scored 610 points, uh, which definitely puts you in the money. I won some money with that lineup. Some other people who uh, got the breakdown want some money with that lineup. Um, so that'll be one of the things that we offer in the page here. We're also talking about doing our own um, rankings. We know that um, you know that Brett does the, does his rep rankings in the premium uh, section, but neither Drew or I are in those. So you know, we thought for our own benefit, you know, it would be good for us to start ranking, and that would be something that else that we could offer you guys. Um, I'm thinking about maybe doing a quick picks kind of little breakdown for like a lower pay tier, just like who we like, who we like best in cash, who we like best in GBPs, who it is, uh, who are the lock, quote unquote, might be. Um, so things like that. So as soon as I get off here, long I'm story get short, you all need to buy it. Huh? Long story short, they all need to buy it. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, as soon as I get off here, I'm going to go reactivate that and kind of like get that back up to speed. So by the time you're listening to this, you know, a day or so later, you can go check that out. Um, Patreon.com slash Daily Fantasy Knockout, if I can reactivate that uh, handle or whatever. Um, so, yes, check that out. Otherwise, you can catch my premium breakdown at MMA-Today at their DFS hub, as always. Um, again, the, uh, remember that the, fight, the fights start Saturday morning, so I'm going to have that breakdown out for you guys tomorrow. Um, so keep an eye out and make sure you get your lineups in on time. Thank you guys again for watching. Drew, you have anything else? No, nah, man, I think, uh, that about does it. Looking forward to this fight and, um, good luck this weekend, guys. Peace. Peace.